So welcome to the chapter on basic embedded programming. And Scott, in parentheses here in the chapter, it says non-RTOS. Why are we doing a chapter about not using an RTOS in an RTOS workshop? Doesn't make sense to me. Well, what we really want to do is get the lay of the land. What is it like when you're working in an embedded system? Uh, we'll have a bit, lot better sense of what an RTOS does for us if we kind of understand how a non-RTOS or just a normal or kind of uh, earlier embedded system works. So we're really going to look at the topology and, and what it looks like within an embedded system and how we're solving problems. In this case, we're doing fairly simple things. We're, we're just going to blink an LED with a GPIO, a general purpose bit I.O. And that's sort of the hello world in the MCU world, right? Blinking an LED. If you can right. get that to work, there's a lot of things that are already verified. We, yeah, we've solved a lot of problems if we can get that far. We've we figured out how to get a program to run, how to talk to uh, the, the output of the device. Create a project. Create a project, yeah. So that's going to give us kind of a chance to see the kind of the whole scheme of things. And then in the future chapters, when we start to bring in RTOS, we can see how those services really help elevate our experience and allow us to build systems much, much more quickly. Sounds good. So let's get right into the chapter. Great. As we said, in this chapter, we're going to be doing an embedded system using TI's GPIO driver. And we don't mention it here, but we just did in the video a second ago. This is, again, going to be one of our non-RTOS type labs. So we're going to be using the no RTOS driver using so we can use the driver. Yeah. And this will, again, become kind of the uh, counterpart to one of the labs you'll be doing in the workshop chapters uh, chapter six. six. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the goal of this chapter is to use a TI driver to uh, manipulate GPL or general purpose input output, basically toggle pins on the device. And we can use those to blink the LED or turn an LED on or off on target board. Uh, along the way, we're going to you know, look at GPL and how to manipulate it and how to use it in the system. Uh, three ways, in fact, that we can we can use uh, or manipulate the GPL pins. And then we're going to create a program that will blink the LED. That's the lab. That's the lab. In fact, we're going to look at that on the next slide. So as we said, the goal of the lab is to blink an LED and kind of following that embedded system topology that we talked about in the previous chapter when we were creating our empty example. In fact, we're going to start with that empty example, but we're going to add to it in the init area. We're going to initialize the GPIO pins that we want to use, and then we'll actually blink the LED in the while loop. So we'll just go on over and over again forever. In part of this implementation, we're going to actually create a mygpio.c, or sorry, code along with the header file. And that's where we're going to put the, the GPL code that uh, allows us to, for example, configure the GPL. And, and while we're doing this, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but we find that we can reuse this more easily throughout, in fact, the rest of the labs in our workshop by kind of modularizing it into its own source file. In fact, we take advantage of this in the later TIR TOS labs where I steal your GPIO.h and C files, hook, line, yeah. and sinker, and there we go. I'm done with that part of it. Once we do it once, it's nice not to have to play with it over and over again. That way we can focus on the RTOS stuff and not worry about blinking the LED. Exactly. So that gives you kind of a good reason for why we're doing this non-RTOS version of, the, of this uh, lab. So the outline for this chapter is we're going to start by taking a look at this general purpose I.O. or what we call GPIO. And then next, we're going to look at the driver that we can use to configure and manipulate the GPIO. In lab 3.8, we're going to use that GPIO driver and then to, to create that blinking LED that we just talked about. Then we're going to look at extending that GPIO driver. What does that mean? Well, the GPIO driver is configured for the board that we're using. And by default, on most of our most of the boards that our users are, are those of you who are listening to this, you have more than two LEDs on the board, but the TI solutions that, that are provided in the examples in the SDK, they only support one or two. They only support two, okay. generally. So the extending here is really just how can we make use of a couple more LEDs? And part of why we want to do this is that it helps us to kind of dig through the driver code and understand how this driver is set up and how it's configured for a board. Is this where we start looking into the board configuration files, the .h and .c you mentioned in the last chapter? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we're going to look at those board configuration files, board.h plus the device specific board configuration right. files. We're going to make a couple of changes in those. And this would be the same type of thing you might be doing if you're porting this driver to your own board. And then finally, lab 3b is, well, let's make it so. Let's, let's make it so. Let's, let's go, go ahead and do that. Right. So that's, uh, that's going to be the outline for this chapter.